So, um, my name is Andrew Bettis. I'm with a company called 360, and thank you for the invite uh, for me to come in. If you, if you don't mind, can you kind of introduce yourselves and your roles in the organization? Sorry, Jeff, who just said that? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's, um, we do that all the time, so we'll just. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Van Winkle. So I have my telecommunications technician. Uh, also do our programming for security, so door access cameras, uh, things to that effect. Okay. What door? What door access are you using now? We're using Genetech. Genetech. Mm -hmm. Today. Today. <laughs> <laughs> and soon to be. Come on, Musa. Who's that? Yeah, Musa. We we will be switching over to a Vigilant. So okay. that'll be, um, that, that we're gonna decide exactly what that project will look like. Uh, the two new schools that we'll bring on next year will be on the Vigilant. Okay. And sometime between now and then, we'll decide exactly how we can bring yeah. the existing nine buildings we have. Got it. I it's pitch good. Like, it's like a classroom. What's coming in? I'm a computer technician. Okay. Fix the things. Yeah. Trevor Timmons, I'm the director of technology. <coughs> DJ New, I'm a computer technician here, district as well. John Ellingson, network administrator. And Steve Mingolardi, the enterprise technology manager. Got it, okay. Uh, sounds good. So, what I'm going to do, um, really most PowerPoint, the most, uh, I do have, I'm going to show you some software. And um, what I've proposed is an IP solution for the new schools. But I, I want to kind of give you an idea of what we have our, in our portfolio so the other nine schools can possibly get caught up to you know, the new schools. Um, so, and, and there's a couple different products that, we'll, that I'll talk about. But I'll, I'll hop in, I'll, I'll have this PowerPoint, and then I'll hop out and go to the software, and kind of the interface. And then if you can kind of keep me honest on some of the questions that you had, I, I kind of know them, but I don't know, that I don't have them fresh. So if, if I'm missing something or if you want me to, and I, a lot of things in this, the tools that I, the software tools I, can, I uh, will show you, I can show you some and answer some of those questions in there. So, but there's a couple of pieces of software, then I'm gonna hop back out, get the PowerPoint and some other components, and that's one of the components back there that I don't even have wired up. I just thought I'd bring, uh, that. that's actually our uh, audio enhancement uh, product, uh, which is really totally separate from the system uh, itself. So, anyway. Let me get rolling. So 360, how many of you heard of 360? <laughs> Zero, okay. Um, so we were a company called, uh, in, in 1992, we were a company called Teradon. And uh, there are still quite a few Teradon systems out there. We uh, switched over, we were uh, purchased by, uh, by another owner um, in, uh, about seven years ago and we kind of rebranded to the 360. But um, some people have heard of Teradon, some people haven't, um, you know, depending on the area of the country, too, of, uh, of who's heard of us. Uh, we're based in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, which is a suburb of Albuquerque. Um, and really all of our uh, warehouse uh, support uh, engineering is all based in Rio Rancho. Uh, and really, predominantly, we're really a software company. I mean, we sell hardware, but we're predominantly a software company and, uh, and have built this software from the ground up. So. Oh, and then we do sell our products to uh, uh, partners. Uh, so we don't kind of sell direct at all to partners and uh, integrators. While you're talking about partners and integrators, mm -hmm. can you give us a good idea of in Colorado how many kind of resources do we have? So there's a company called Tech Electronics that is, uh, they're fairly new to the market uh, and they actually, they have a fire division right now and they are going to be adding 
the um, the life safety uh, end of things. They're not running right now, and, and they don't have. They're not trained uh, up and running. Uh, but I'll be honest with you. That's all I have in Colorado, and they're based in Denver, or they they have an office in Denver. They're actually based in uh, St. Louis, and they you know kind of bought integrators, sure, um, and grown that way. Uh, we've also covered Southern Colorado through um, a company called Powerline Technologies out of Albuquerque, and and we have uh, we worked down there, but not up into in uh, in the, in the uh, metro area. So that's kind of our status right now. Uh, but by the time that we would you know do any install at all, the tech is going to be ready to go by that time. Um, <coughs> So, just to give you an overview of, of, of some of our products, and this, I'm, I'm going to you know, go into more detail on these. But so, really, the, the main product that we have is that emergency notification uh, intercom and paging solution, um, and then we have you know software that uh, works with that product. Uh, we sell clock systems. We sell. Um, we also can you know integrate to other solutions. Uh, like access control cameras, things like that. Um, and we also sell, you know, all the speakers um, that uh, are on our quotes are 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 sold by us uh, as well. And then we have a couple other products that I'll get into is district wide communications. So that, you know that would give somebody uh, superintendent the ability to whether you have our product or not, if you can have in. That's one thing I was going to ask you. What, what are you using now as far as uh, paging intercom? AMX School View. Scoop, what is that? AMX School AMX. View. Okay. So, pretty old. It's honestly relatively new, but they went through a couple of buyouts in quick succession. Yeah. Hard the bottom and then yeah. dumped them. Yeah. I see. Got it. Yeah. In satisfaction with that product right now less than <laughs> the quicker i can get rid of it the better and is it just uh, just issues with it not working or yeah. support or all of the well, we think some of it's you know partially the product some of it's the integrators and the people who installed it as well as the way it was installed so sure yeah but sure yeah it's just not reliable really analog IP. system nope oh, IP. IP. It's IP. oh really yeah. okay got it got it um Okay, so um, and then so we have products. Uh, this district-wide communication is called CastNet, and that's something that the district office could use. So, say you get your first two schools on our product, we can actually they can actually page or send information out. Usually, it's like weather alerts. You know, they they'll get the information maybe before the office does it, and they want to make sure that the whole district knows, and they can. Uh, you know, send something out district wide. We can send th things out by you know geofence. You know, say if there's a you know a petroleum plant or somebody something near near where we need to maybe alert a, a cluster of schools of an issue. Um, we can do that as well with that uh, with what's called Castnet. So as you upgrade the other schools, you could actually use Castnet if somebody from the district. It, it, you know, from this office, would want to be able to go out and page the school, schools as well. And then we have that audio enhanced, the uh, AES 30, which is our classroom audio enhancement product. So I'm going to talk about a couple different platforms. So the IP command platform, that's that's what I have proposed to you all for the new schools, and it is. Um, um, well, I'll talk about it in more detail, but I also want to touch on Galaxy as well. Um, so with the AMX product, I'm being IP, I'm not going to touch so much on Galaxy. A lot of times I'll come into, uh, into uh, the school systems, you know, they're using analog here, you know, and old systems um, that are not IP at all. And um, you can come in, basically replace a head end and utilize all the all the wiring and all the all the infrastructure that's there already. So Galaxy, and this is kind of our 
you know, traditional head end replacement, and this is really more on the analog side. We come in with a rack, those are all speaker cards, amps in there, uh, box cards in there, and, and we can go, uh, we're up and running there. So with our product, um, with our IP product, what did you, are they AMX speakers or? No, they're JBLs for the most part. Yeah, okay. like that. Okay. And some smaller ones. Those, Got it. those are the bigger models. But. Got it, okay. Well, we, we have our own speaker line for our IP products. So it would be, we don't have, uh, you know, there might be some discussion if we could interface to those, but today, right now, I would have to replace speakers. Um, you know, obviously the, the, uh, the, the wiring's there, are they all PoE speakers? Essentially, yeah, with yeah. the box. The, the speakers are just straight up speaker. Like this, the, up there, they're just speaker wire, but they're running into a barracks box, as they call it, and that has the PoE that provides the power to the oh, speaker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So, all of our speakers, that, that's all built in. So, um, that's all built in. Amps in there as well in one unit. Uh, so, that's how our IP speakers are, are wired. And that's another reason why we, when we come in and replace, we, we come in and replace with our speakers. So I won't belabor this too much because it is, if, if you had some analog, I, I was anticipating maybe you had some old analog speakers in the mix. So how long ago was that switch over to AMX? 2018. 2018. Okay. Got it. Got it. So um, I'm going to just move on. Um, so IP command, and this this is our. So as you saw, I'm getting backspace again. So this is where we have analog speakers. You know, uh, traditional <coughs> wiring to the analog speakers uh, coming. You know, to a 66 block that's located behind this unit. Um, with IP command, we have a server. Just server goes in your rack. We don't bring in a rack unless you want to buy a rack from us. It uh, goes in your rack and, and you're, uh, you're basically good to go. Um, but IP command, you can see there's software um, that's actually already loaded on the system. Um, so uh, Compose and View are a couple pieces of software. Compose is the uh, administrator software. So this is something that, uh, you know, if you want your technicians to get trained on the system, uh, they would be, you know, doing configuration in Compose. Uh, bell schedules, they, uh, a school would use Compose. So principal or secretary would be, would have Compose uh, at their location. But really above and beyond that, they probably wouldn't touch Compose above and beyond uh, bell schedules. Um, then we have a product called View, and that's really more for the, the office secretary. It comes on a 24-inch touchscreen computer, and, and I'll show you both of these in, in the interface. And basically, they can touch, you know, if there's a lockdown, just touch it, and it's locked. Everything's, uh, the lockdown goes into effect. Um, so, uh, VoIP software is already in there, notification software is already in there, and multicast, which is our, the way we communicate to the IP speakers is, is in there as well. Uh, mapping, I'll show you that in, uh, in view. So, this is kind of the, the layout of, of IP command. Um, so, you've, you've got the server there. Um, and one thing that we can do, and this is with both Galaxy and IP Command, we can, uh, we can kind of value engineer this solution. So if we wanted to do, say in the hallway, we want to do analog in zones. I mean, analog's a heck of a lot cheaper than, than IP speaker. Uh, we, can, we can zone it out where we have analog speakers, and, I, and this can talk to an, analog speakers as well with this IP AMP1 that's in the middle of it. Um, uh, it. It converts that over to analog signal, and we can do that and really, you know, push this price down uh, as opposed to using all IP speakers. But, you know, with new construction, you know, we, we can certainly do IP as well, all IP. 
but you can see here uh, one way, two ways IP speakers, um, lay in speakers, along with uh, uh, wall mounted uh, speaker as well. Um, and then uh, other items that we have, and I'll get into those other uh, pieces like desk, desk alert and HDMI overrides. Are you, do you have digital signage network in place in your current schools? Are you planning on doing that on your new one? Yes, we'd love to. <laughs> love to. I mean, I guess, you know, like the, the screen upstairs. As you walk in, we would love to have a unified system that is in some of the spec. The problem is just finding the right system for I for understand. It. Okay. So everything we have right now is a one-off. Yes. And we have some varied. And that's approaches. typical. I mean, that's that's totally typical. But um, so um, also we are a dealer of a of a product called Hyperspike, and it's an outdoor speaker. Very. It's. They're excellent speakers. I mean, as far as if you want instructions and people to know what the instructions are rather than a tone, hyperspike's the way to go. I mean, you can hear that thing forever and, and hear it like it's there right next to you. Um, so, but um, like I said, IP command really just mounts in your, in your uh, current rack. So to talk about Compose and Galaxy, or in, in, in view, um, I'll, I'll break out and, and show you those in, in one minute. But the, this is what can this is what is exposed uh, with these different modules, and so it has all of the modules, uh, with exception of mapping, and then um, and mapping comes it would come with view if you and that's a separate license uh, that's purchased, but. This kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that can be done with those modules. And like I said, they're all in, uh, in IP command, so uh, it's not like you have to pick and choose um, at all. Uh, one big thing is no recurring software fees. So there's no SaaS at all. Uh, we are, uh, and like I said, those Teradon systems, we're still supporting those Teradon systems, even though servers we can't supply anymore, but uh, we're still supporting those. So we, uh, we uh, have always done that, and you know, there's no SaaS uh, fees going on uh, with our products. So let me hop out of here real quick and show you Compose. So this is a demo system I VPN into uh, at our, from our head, headquarters. You can see there's tiered rights. So uh, the school, uh, they would not have, say, admin rights. You'd give them rights, and they, may, they can only see the bell schedule, they, you know, if you don't want them touching it or, uh, anything else. So um, you can definitely have rights to the software uh, divvied out. So this is Compose, and all of our software kind of looks the same, but we have uh, you know four different windows here with Compose, and you can see you know this when we sign into a system, this you know we would have the name of the system uh, here, um, and then we have different um, items that we can choose from. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to. Let's go to, I'm going to show you how to build and amend a, uh, I don't know why I keep looking up there. Uh, so this would be a bell schedule, and I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. So you can see here, uh, we've got a bell schedule called two hour delay. And so I highlight that. That tells you what, how, what, how that uh, bell schedule is laid out. Um, get this bigger here, so you can see. 
so um, this uh, zones all page uh, you know they uh, different tones uh, there's can tones in the in the system you can certainly upload your own tones if you want to um, into the system um, duration um, and then event this is just for more for the calendaring uh, piece of it but you can see just the different uh, different bell schedules that are already you know built in there uh, so there's elementary school and all of their different uh, bells that they have so say if I want to go in and create a new schedule so let's say um, let's say that we have the ACT this Saturday that we're going to do uh, testing and we want to do a bell schedule for the ACT so I would go in here create that bell schedule and then select ACT so you see the drop down of all my bell schedules that are available and then just start so let's say that starts at 8 a.m. Uh, let's say let's do a tone and there are all my tones that are already kind of pre-canned in here so let's just say alarm one is the tone and then a zone so I have the ability to take this and you know you we can have certain bells you know throughout the school um, let's just say that that ACT is administered in the A wing so I'm going to select the A wing and duration 10 seconds and then I'm not going to put a new back color on there so as I go up here and look at ACT I'm going to add this to the schedule so there's my first one and then I just change it 10 a.m. there's my next one and so on and so forth so that's how easy it is to change a bell schedule <clears throat> and like I said this the office or the principal would have exposure to this um, basically compose uh, you can copy this as many times as you want so if you want it on your laptops you can have it um, as administrators and uh, you know the schools can copy it as many times as they want as well but really that's the only piece that the school I can see touch with regularity, um, and well, if they if they're changing bell schedules here and there, or adding and amending. So, anything? Any questions on that at all? Is the software Windows only, or does it work on Mac? Windows only. Yep, and uh, and that server is uh, Windows Server 10. So, are you a Mac? District or mm -hmm. you are the servers on Mac. The servers would be Windows, but got it. we have a decent amount of PCs too. But we got a lot of Macs as well. Most Macs. of our, especially anyone that would be doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. there are Macs. Yeah, really, mostly. Yeah. Yep, we are uh, Windows only. There. So. Um. Any questions on the bells? What if you don't know what those sound like? Can you listen to them from there when you're selecting them? You know, uh, there's not a preview at all, so it would you know need to be done after hours uh, and done. So there is no preview at all. That's a great question. Anything else on bells? So, and just um, let me get into, I'll just show you zones real quick. So this is where, um, it, and one thing you can do, you know, you can you can personalize this and make, you know, if you know Mrs. Jones' room or whatever. Uh, you can do that and uh, make it a little bit user friendly, more user friendly, um, especially for the office. But the office really will not get into 
uh, zoning and adding zones, uh, it would probably be your team yeah. to doing something like that. But you know, there's this is just example of some of the zones that are uh, pre-built in here um, in this particular system. But um, you know, usually hallway, library, cafeteria, different zones uh, would be there. Wherever we have, you know, uh, clusters of multiple speakers, uh, commons areas would be a zone, and then you know, all the all the uh, all the rooms would be. They wouldn't even be in zones. They would just you know have their separate extensions uh, for those. So how is it to make a new zone? Can you group like on the fly? So. Do you have some of these things preset, like an A wing? So if I wanted to do an A wing and one other classroom in B wing, how easy is it to, for me to do that? Uh, to uh, combine zones? I would say to create a new zone. Yeah. Because it would be like a, a one-off type of thing where maybe they wanted to reach this particular group plus two sure. classrooms. Sure, sure, sure. So, so basically the same kind of setup as you saw before, you know, I would go in, um, let's just uh, call it AZ wing, uh, if you will. And then, um, setting up that zone. This is where you would add it, but um, I'll be honest, I'm not sure, um, and especially a combination of, of uh, zones, um, I would have to actually, I'm not sure how to do that. I could certainly find that. The out. reason I'm asking a question like that, you know, Andy, is if we're looking at, you know, testing that's going on in a, sure. you know, a second grade classroom, so they might, they might have a first floor at one of our schools, and so we would need to pull out a particular classroom that's testing, so we don't, have, we don't have announcements on that room. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's no, the, that's, I'm just curious. As well. No, that's that's a good question. I I I uh, I'm not sure how to recreate that um, or take you know take a room out of the sure. zone. Um, I'm not sure how to do that uh, or to show you how to do that. I, I know it can be done, but uh, I don't know how to do that. So I apologize about that. Um, IP speakers, just to show you that piece. Um, and I know there was a question about uh, being able to adjust the, the volume in each room. Um, so we have the ability to do that, uh, especially with our IP speakers. Um, on, on volume, so I can go in, uh, say, the, I've only got a couple set up here, but you can go in and adjust that volume. So, you know, maybe it's a volume eight in this room, it be, might be a three in another room, uh, and you can, you can reset that if you wanted to. Uh, and that's all done from, uh, from Compose. You don't have to go in, there's no tabs or anything like that, like a analog speaker. Do you have any in-room overrides? Um, we have, with our current system, gone back into especially conference rooms. We could be holding an expulsion hearing or something, and the bell would be highly disruptive. And so for, for a little while, they'll turn the knob down on the wall. Sure. Do you have anything like that? I, I don't. It would actually have to be done through, through Compose. There's not a, a an adjustment not on our IP speakers. Okay. So it would have to be done here. So there's another possibility of uh, you know an admin or a administrator at the school level getting into this and using that. So. Um, but really, this is uh, like I said, a lot of this is configuration. Uh, you know, what phone system are you using or will you? Cisco. Cisco, okay. So, 
basically we integrate to uh, um, a VoIP phone system uh, at the SIP trunk level. And so as long as there's SIP trunk there, and we've done a lot of Cisco in our time, so uh, that should not be an issue if there was some you know, off brand I would basically say you need we need to have a SIP trunk in place, and that's a, we also use the SIP trunk to uh, to network the uh, all of the servers together. So, uh, and I know that you wanted some autonomy, and uh, you know if the WAN went down, uh, that you know that that school could still function and, and work, and and that's that would be our suggestion. Theoretically, you could have a server here, and you know, do all the schools from here, uh, from that server. But if, if we did, if there was an outage, it would, they'd all be down. So we'd probably elect to put a server in each, each location um, there. But, um, but really a lot of this is, um, you know, integrator would be in here using this or your team would be doing that. We do have, I know there was a question about training uh, we do have a quarterly. We actually just started, you know, after COVID and everything, we started up our in-person training in Albuquerque. It's a four-day class, and we have our first one next week. Um, we, we will do those quarterly, and uh, that's for integrators and end users as well. So we have that available. Uh, oh, um, I'm sorry. I, one thing I forgot to hit. Um, so I, I built that ACT schedule or the bell schedule. So one thing I, I built that up already. So now I'm, I'm going to select a day to do that. So let's do it on the 25th. I'm going to select ACT. So I go to the calendar and then add it to the calendar and it will, whatever I specified, you know, those, those times, um, it will, uh, it will be, uh, in action that day and you know you can have obviously have multiple account uh, multiple entries in here as well do you have to select that option for each day or can you like <clears throat> multiple days you can highlight multi so this repeating schedule down here okay so you can actually do that so you can have a block of days uh, there also is a question about um, calendar and, and taking your calendar, and I don't know if it's Outlook or what, but I, I don't integrate to an outside calendar, so it would all have to be built in in this uh, in the software. So then another thing uh, that's uh, that could be utilized is notifications. And so notifications is, um, we have the ability, and so, you know, some of these outside systems like, um, like uh, a Vigilon or a, a system like that. So we have the ability to, let me look here. Uh, we also have the ability to do uh, card contacts. So I can, um, you know, through electrical signal, trigger uh, a door lock or something to that effect. A Vigilon, we've actually had some discussions with them as for like building an API around that and, and integrating to their system uh, as well as cameras as well. Uh, but uh, a lot of cameras, we will use a card contact for that to turn it on, turn it off type of thing. So if we hey, say have a lockdown, I, I want all the cameras to be turned on. I want all the doors to be locked, et cetera, and, and it can all be triggered through here, or vice versa. If they go to the, you know, the, the uh, a Vigilon, and it can actually go in through card contact, we can have a, a, the, uh, you know, a tone or whatever alarm goes off in our system. So can you show me that? Either way, I cannot, no, no I cannot, but, um, because it sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. But it, you know, and, and that's why, you know, we work with integrators who sell all of these different systems and, you know, they will put those things together and, and pull it together. But I, I, I don't have a way of showing that. I, I, I apologize about that. 
similarly on that, um, and because this has come up plenty of times with it. So, if say there's a smoke detector or some other sort of thing that would trigger an alarm that isn't this, at con card, card contact be the same way? Would it still like fire off the alerts from the PA system? It certainly from can. Like that? Okay. Yep, it definitely can. Absolutely. So, uh, let me get down to notifications. Um, so one thing that we could do uh, with notifications is, um, and, and we've seen a lot of uh, with Evalde in Texas and, and the need, uh, they, they have a lot of criteria for some grants down in Texas where a system has to be able to call the police department directly. And so we have the ability to do that and that's, that's through uh, what's called monitor routes and uh, let me, I thought it was not there. Um, <laughs> where the heck is that? It's not monitor devices. Uh, but via monitor routes. And so basically if we do hit a lockdown, it can actually call out two numbers. And, and, and notify whoever, you know, could be super, uh, superintendent, could be, uh, could be the police department, and, and let them know. We also have text-to-speech, and so you're the, uh, what, the I, love, I love, love you guys, is that what it's called, the protocol? Yes, yes, yeah. So your, your protocol, uh, we, can, we can do um, with text-to-speech, so if there are, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, I apologize, I mean, I, I see a lot of different protocols, but if there's certain verbiage that needs to be done in the system, it can certainly be done through text-to-speech. And so, uh, you know, if you have a specific instruction, it shouldn't be long instruction, but specific instruction of lock the door or something like that, you know, these instructions. Um, that we can do that through text-to-speech. And so you, you basically enter that in, and when we do have the lockdown or the security uh, situation, it will play that uh, particular message. That's like a robotic voice, or? It's got the, uh, what is it called? Um, Cannot remember the name, and I actually uh, just seeing if I can. I I'm not. I can't remember what the name. It, there's a name to it, and it's it's like a like a Siri type of voice, or you know, one of those. It, and it had a it has a name to it, and I cannot remember what that is to save me. Um, but it is, it isn't, uh, it isn't, you know, totally robotic, but it's, yeah. it's like a Siri type of voice, um, to it. And, um, there are different choices of, of doing that. And I, I can't remember the name of it now that, uh, that I said that. So, you but said that, that would help fit that, uh that protocol is, is, you know, you have this, uh, this is an example of what's, you know, they say if, if it's, you know, we have an all clear after a lockdown, you know, they can hit the button and uh, all clear and then they're going to be, you know, play this message through text to speech. You said with the emergency alert system, we can dial out, is it up to two numbers or? It's multiple, multiple numbers, multiple numbers okay. as many as you want. And does that include texts or SMS messages as well, or is it just? So SMS messages, uh, what we do, we do not go directly out to SMS. We would go through uh, email, okay. and then to SMS okay. by email. So um, we don't have that uh, directly to SMS. Okay. So it would be through your yeah, email system. So. Um, just thinking what else, um, 
and emails are you know unlimited as well. Um, how you want to set that up? Really, I think that's any other questions on compose or that. Like I said, a lot of this is going to be configured, um, and a lot of it is just configuration by an integrator uh, to your standards. I don't know if that will be something else later or not, but I know we talked about it earlier, I saw it a little bit in there. Uh, it looks like, as far as a visual sort of indication of an alert or an alarm of some sort, uh, is pretty much the option you guys offer the HDMI sort of takeover kind of deal? Uh, well, so that's why I was asking about the digital signage system. So we do have, there would be a box uh, by, gotcha. by the display and we can take over that system. Gotcha. So there is an HDMI override for a digital signage system. As far as a visual, we have strobes. Okay. Uh, so, and I know the question was about um, speaker slash uh, message board in, yeah. in that. We have clock speaker combos, but we don't have message okay. combos. So we actually use strobes and we're doing that through a card contact okay. and, and triggering those. As well, and the strobes are separate from the speaker. It's like a just a, a extra device. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. So, and you know they can be placed, uh, you know, at the end of hallways or you know wherever strategically, uh, you would need something like that. Uh, we do have. We also have a marquee. <laughs> I would uh, maybe for commons areas. Uh, that can be used and so you know you can have a go wildcats or whatever message and then you know if there was this emergency situation it could have you know text going across that uh, but we do have that it's not appropriate for classroom at all gotcha. uh, it's really more for you know front of school hallways um, commons areas you could design a classroom with a marquee it's new construction. I'm just saying, you know, you've got the ability. One wall is just a marquee on the top. <laughs> yeah, the ribbon board around the yeah. thing. Yeah. That'd be outstanding. It just cycles kids' GPAs around. <laughs> John's got an A. Yeah. I mean, like a little peer pressure going on. Um, so now I'm going to show you view. And uh, like I said before, it kind of same look and feel and same tiered rights uh, that you can have on view. Uh, usually not, not a, uh, compared to Compose, it's not, there's not a lot of requirements as far as tiering this. Um, and is this, this what would be on the panel that they have? Yeah, the this would be. <laughs> And this I, is where the office staff would use to page out, page in, and all that. Correct, stuff. Yeah. and and you know they can definitely use their phones okay. and do that. And and uh, but you know the 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 good and bad of phones is that um, and you know really use any phone in the system. Um, but the good and bad of the phones is uh, I don't know what room you know I got to look at a list yeah. and, and refer to that. And so this makes it nice. Um, you know, if there really is, I know you want flexibility to page from anywhere, and, and obviously you would use a phone to do that. You also can use your um, use the uh, a mobile phone as well. We do have a mobile app, and I'll I'll show you that in a minute. But this would be on. So we sell Galaxy View as a um, uh, on a 24 inch touchscreen PC. And I would recommend at least one, you know, for the office, um, and uh, really makes it easy, especially if somebody's sick, and you know somebody needs to pay someone, and it's just not like it's it's pretty easy, and you can we can and you'll I'll see show you this in a second, uh, but you can define a, a lot of different things, kind of the same look and feel as as before. What I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you maps real quick. Um, basically, you can import uh, a floor plan of your map into the system. 
Uh, you can also, uh, you see here where it says active cameras, you can view camera, you say in a hallway and, and toggle between those cameras and you're just gonna shut that down uh, real quick. And you can actually do your paging and intercom through, uh, through the map as well. So you can see, uh, say you can lay icons on here and uh, actually, you know, just if you want to page the laboratory, go up here and click on the phone and page that. If we have a lockdown, go here and um, hit lockdown. So and you'll see here in this notifications box, it'll pop up and say, um, you know, this all, actually it's, that's all, I hit the wrong one. Um, but the, um, it, will, it will notify you what's going on down here. Um, and you have the ability to uh, monitor a room. So if we have two way, uh, we can hear what's going on in that room. We can also record as well. Um, in your area, and then you know that's there's where we would uh, stop that recording there. But um, really easy to use, and you know so you know the lab. I just click and I send out a page. Hallways, click, send out, send out a page uh, to the hallways, and then you know like I said, your emergency you know, icons would be down here as well. Uh, it has a built-in soft phone. Uh, they can use that to do paging uh, to, to the room, um, have a headset um, connected to the, uh, to the um, PC as well. So that, well, it's so a typical uh, setup, and usually this is up and running all the time. So I would go in, I'm just going to put that map back up there. Uh, say I've got maps going uh, over, get this over so we can view. Um, so I have maps up and running. Then I have other, uh, let's say, let's go to tone events. Ah, I did not want to do that. So. Tone events. So if, if we do have an emergency, easily just go and press a button. And so lockdown, emergency, could be weather. And so you would have all your events here. And so somebody can just turn around, press the button, and it's, it's done. Uh, where they're not dialing an uh, extension or, or finding out what that extension is, needing to find out. And um, extensions. So this is where, say, we do have secretaries out. You know, nobody's really familiar with the system. You know, we can name these rooms if you want. You know, English one or whatever, uh, art class, shop, whatever. You can name it and uh, make it really easy for somebody. There's the extension of the of the particular room. You know, if they wanted to dial that, but they uh, uh, just literally click and it's done. Can that be? Imported at all from uh, Cisco systems that we already kind of have set up with that? It cannot. Okay. It would need to be built or rebuilt in okay. here as well. And so, that, that would dial directly into the classrooms? Yeah, so that it, or through those it, it would go to the to the speakers. It, I, I know it's a little, yeah. uh, even though we have the handset there, right. it would go to the go to the speaker. Okay. And microphone connected to the speaker or okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's just an entire unit. Yeah, it's all built in there. Okay. Yeah. But we do um, you know specify <coughs> there, there's two way speakers, a little more expensive, one way speakers. Right. So obviously the one way would be in the hallways. What about people in the classroom initiating a two way with the office? Uh, so call switch yeah. that's connected to that speaker okay. and that would be done and used. Um, we also have panic buttons as well, but that's not 
you, you, you know, communication to the office, it, that's more of like, it's locked down. Gotcha. And, okay. and that would signal lockdown. Okay. So we have panic buttons as well. That is get a kick out of the teacher screaming at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> or on the wall. I mean, it, can, it can be on the, you know, the, the switch would be here and they could just go to the wall. Yeah. We, we've had them on the wall in certain classrooms before. And when a teacher's on one side of the room, yeah, and they the like the secretary calls in, sure, there's a lot of distortion or they can't really hear, yeah. So I like the ceiling mounted, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that would be kind of a typical layout that, that you know they might have up and running, and you know here's all the, you know another way of paging. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways, but it just makes it easier little bit user friend, more user friendly for the uh, for the office to to use the system but like I said in the office um, at least one one of these and um, you know maybe the principal might want this as well but usually it's just uh, one unit in the office It's all software based. None of this is cloud, right? None, none of it's web browser based at all. No, uh, but I, I'm going to show you. Uh, there is a piece. So there is a scheduling that is uh, web based. Okay. Uh, that that someone could use. Say wet, bad weather. They can't get into the office. They can go to that okay. um, interface and use that. But it really is more for scheduling. Okay. And that's I'll, I'll hit on that. But this is that that uh, view with the. Uh, with that uh, okay. map layout, uh, Galaxy Net mobile app. Um, so, just to clarify what this is, basically this is like another Cisco phone. It would be um, set up in the same way. It would be on your network. So, if they're at Walmart and not within your network it's not they wouldn't be able to use and it is only one way so say if they're out on the playground your wi-fi does your wi-fi go that far most of them push out most yeah so but somewhere yeah. they they <laughs> would have the ability to have you know seek a lockdown or whatever uh, uh to to the school it's they don't receive a tone they don't hear anything on their phone it's it's a one-way gotcha. communication but it's it's on the on the network so, um, you know, really they can do all of these things. So, you know, emergency event, just click on that page and it's, it's done. But that's a separate app you're saying, right? That's not a, that's not the Cisco app or Jabber app or anything like that. No, so, it's, it's a separate app. It's free, doesn't cost a dime, but it is, uh, it's a separate app. And like I said, these would be on your network. I mean, they would be a network, not a network device. They're the cell phone. So, do you know, just from a tech side of things, is that is that an app that they get that would have to be built then within the Cisco system too, so they can access it? No, so no, it, it it would be like a Cisco Cisco right. phone, but it would there would be the configuration would be it would be pre configured right. to to your needs, but. Um, it's certainly, I mean, you know, we're, we're hitting the, you know, doing paging. Um, we could actually make a phone call. And really, our, our system is a, is a telecom system, uh, basically, um, and can be used uh, for those purposes as well. But, um, you know, kind of the same look and feel, but it would be, it would be built uh, within Compose and, and configured that way. So building, uh, building and compose, it gets configured, and then user gets access to that based on authentication or however we assign that. Is that yeah, correct? however you assign that. Correct. Yeah. But like I said, it this is it's uh, it doesn't cost a dime to, to have mobile phones. Uh, so Galaxy Web, this is the web-based interface. Um, really for uh, more for scheduling than anything but uh, can certainly be used in there and 
and that is it's a it's a per license per seed license for that. You just sign in with credentials and, and do that. Uh, desktop emergency messaging. So if you wanted something like that to pop on a desktop, say we do have a lockdown, you can pop on a desktop. Don't have a lot of people who use this, but it's available. Also Windows only? Correct. It is. And there's a there's a HDMI override. Okay. And that unit would be near by every okay. display. Right. So you know you have a media player and then that this HDMI override would be going into that media player connected to your display. So I mean it couldn't just be that box that has that also done with the signage, is that what you're kind of saying? So like it couldn't just be like this box plugged into HDMI on a uh, projector? Does it have to have that other piece, like a media player on the no, projector? No, you no, could just go straight No, it could, okay. do, it could do cool. that. All right. You know, usually it's, you know, digital signage and, you know, go Wildcats or whatever, and then all of a sudden it's like, we take it over right. and we have this flash this message up there. Right. Yeah. But it could definitely do that. Okay. But it's, it's just to, it's a box per display. Per display. Yeah. So and one's the cloud wire too. Yeah. I assume that's actually just because I saw it there. Every speaker needs a port on switch, right? Uh not necessarily. We okay. can zone speakers. Okay. And do that. So uh, you know, hallway speakers. I would have so I have an they have an amp built in to each speaker. Right. But I can I, I have only so many watts per speaker. So uh, I can do about five speakers on just that the little amp that's in in uh, one of the speakers, gotcha. but uh, I can also add an amp. So if I had a line of you know fifty speakers, right. that was a zone. Going to be one zone. It could be one zone. And I but I would throw an amp in there. Right. Okay. To power those. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so an IP phone comes with the <laughs> with the system uh, it's really more of a service phone and uh, can be used for testing there but um, we also have you know additional IP phones that, that can be sold so really you know these are kind of the the, the key system features uh, a big one is that police you know to, to be able to I hit lockdown and I can call to whatever extension I need or extension or phone number I need to call to, uh, to let somebody know um, about what's going on. Um, and then the, the, the license fees. Just you know, you don't have those on, uh, on software or hardware at all. And then some other systems that we do sell, and I hit on those earlier, but Clocks, um, speakers, etc., and then a clock system. I mean, I really a clock. A lot of people think it's kind of tied to the intercom paging system. It really is kind of a separate system. Um, and you know, master clock, and you know, uh, we use wireless clocks a lot, and it's. Uh, Battery, you know, battery clock. It lasts for five years on a couple of D-cell batteries, and, and it's uh, it's pretty slick. Where you don't have to have all the wiring. Now, just to quickly touch on CastNet, and this is kind of the the whole idea behind CastNet is, say, you know, you do have two new schools with our system, and then you have other schools with that AMX system, who would have the ability to communicate, I mean, from a district-wide uh, standpoint, uh, do that. And we will have that in the district office. We'll also have this in schools as well. So if they want to communicate to each other, uh, and more and more, it seems like it's a need for the schools wanting that or, or uh, uh, wanting to do, uh, be able to do that. Um, but um, you can use CastNet, and when with those other systems, we actually have a, uh, so CastNet's a piece of software, it's web-based, 
Um, and then CastNet, uh, the, that another piece of software would be loaded on the server, uh, but, uh, and on the 360 server. But we also have boxes that are called district, what we call district boxes. So in other, when we have other solutions that we're connecting to and using, we have a basically a black box would go into that school okay. and, and be connected to that system. And then I, I just brought this along, um, the, uh, the classroom audio enhancement uh, solution. It is separate. It is literally um, the, an amp would go in each room uh, along with a cluster of two or four speakers. Um, and it would it's, it operates totally separate. Those are infrared sensors. Yep. So when they do get out of range, say they go out in the hallway and they're talking to somebody, uh, they, they, won't pick, they won't pick up their voice or if they forgot to turn it off. Um, and really it's just an eight ohm speaker. So there'd be one in each classroom? Correct. Maybe if we put them in each classroom? Yeah. Right. And the, they could be paired to a singular box? The reason why I ask is because the system that we have in right now, some of the microphones are mm -hmm. jumping onto you know, different classrooms. Yeah. Especially the ones we have like giant glass windows between them. And it's, it's jumping onto the other receiver. Sure. So they're chatting to another classroom. Sure. Want to be in theirs. <laughs> That's a good question. I, you know, really the placement of those infrared sensors would be pretty strategic in that okay. scenario. So, but you know, that's an example of that. And um, do you have those in like a, entire schools? You know, yeah, we, we do. do yes. you, what system are you using for that? Or is it, I don't know what the name of that thing is. It's yeah. Amex. Is that part of the AMX system? It's a part of the AMX okay. I see. I mean, I was head into it, but I don't know if it had a different name or not. Got it. And then if there were, say, uh, a page that comes over, it would override the teacher, and, and a, the page would come in. Okay. So it has the ability to override anything if there's an emergency message coming out. But um, we did, and we'd love to sell it, you know, for every classroom, but I just, I don't see that as being realistic. But is there a way to send a message to the office from, from the There is not, not from that lanyard. There is not. It's a totally separate system and it's a closed system and per that oh. uh, per that okay. classroom. It would be they would go to a call switch on the okay. on the uh, on the wall to do that. Okay. So and that is it. Lovely. Um, I was looking over our, just so you guys know, in that in that tab where we put the questions and such, um, you can look on there and see if anything is, I think anything was not covered. mentioned the training as far as um, end users and mm -hmm. that could be kind of us but also we kind of be configuring as well yeah um, and that was you know an in-person thing down there for let's say you know office staff or something like that to just kind of utilize the system in their day-to-day -day. do you have something that's you know less intensive uh, you know webinar kind of thing or something that can they can you know access on something like that we we don't really have that um, kind of a self thing it, that would be more the integrator okay gotcha. doing that okay and then you know a lot of times we're doing a train the trainer type of uh, scenario um, and you know Makes maybe sense. Yeah. train one of you guys mm -hmm. in and something to that effect but it's um, we, we don't have anything online okay um, for that I do have an online training course as well I I, I I would recommend doing the the, uh, the full meal deal at least for you all 
um, first before the because you look at that online training and you're right. like, uh, but once you kind of get into the product, it's like, oh, okay. So. And is that a, is that included then in, as part of the overall purchase? This training in Albuquerque? The train? No, it is not. It would be separate. Okay. Um, but it's like, it's like uh, two thousand dollars and per four days. Per district. What's that? Per person, per district. Per person. Person. Yeah. Down in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Is that during the balloon festival? <laughs> <laughs> if you, uh, I guess we could make it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> there might not be. The flights might be a little brutal. During that time. My brother and all, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, Gotcha. <laughs> we can go check in on Lisa. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Anything else? I think I'm good. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, I appreciate your time. You bet. I appreciate your time as well. So, in, I know I've got loose ends with you. I mean, I see, what specific, do you want me to follow up with you on that or? Oh, yeah, we can chat a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you finish up when we can chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but because um, you had a couple of stumpers for me. <laughs>